We can see that there's good evidence that Russia is practicing something in Ukraine. They're at war with Ukraine, so they can get away with things there that they can't elsewhere. For three years, they've attacked every sector of Ukrainian society, from businesses to government agencies. They've destroyed all this government data. They've paralyzed the transportation systems. And then finally, they, they took down the power grid twice, which has never happened anywhere else in the world. The second time, they used a, a piece of automated malware to do that which is a sign that they will probably want to use that again. Uh, you know, they, that looked like a kind of practice round to develop a capability that they wanted to have to use globally. Right. And I think a lot of people here who uh, think about cyber attacks, they know that the grid is definitely a target. But, I mean, the, the reality, based on what you've seen in Ukraine, is that what was done there could be done here and even to worse effect. Well, yeah, the, this piece of malware, which we call Crash Override, that was used in, in late 2016 to take down the power grid in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, it actually has these modular components that you can, you, you can swap out to adapt it from the Ukrainian equipment to American equipment, for instance, or to other parts of, of Europe. And it, it seemed to have this little component as well that might be used to actually cause physical damage to the grid. That's the kind of real nightmare scenario that we've been worried about for more than a decade, that the grid can be not just disrupted, but, but parts of it could be destroyed in a way that would have a lasting effect. And I don't think people realize that parts of the grid, I mean, for instance, transformers. You destroy a transformer, a transformer takes years to build. They don't keep spare transformers <laughs> on the back shelf at Con Ed just in case it gets destroyed. I mean, you can use a cyber attack and cause that physical damage, which then could have far-reaching implications. That's right. These tra transformers are multi-million dollar pieces of equipment. They're oft often custom made. Sometimes they're made in, in China, and we, we have some backup ones, but probably, you know, we don't have all of the, the ones we need in, in a place where they could be replaced quickly. So I think that once you start to destroy equipment, we could start to see not just hours of blackout, as we did in these Ukrainian examples, but potentially days or weeks even. And New York City had one of those, what, about a decade ago. We, right. My neighborhood, I think it was 10 days without electricity. It got really old after about day two. Do, do you think the U.S. is, I would hope to think that we're on top of this, we're aware of it. How ready are we to respond or to defer something like this from happening here, in your opinion? Well, you know, the, the, the U.S. government is, I th they're pretty sanguine about this. They, they tell me that we're prepared. We definitely have better cybersecurity than Ukraine, of course. One would hope. Um, but at the same time, we also, we depend on automation more in our grid. We are... Uh, our, our grid is more modern in a way, and that actually makes it in some ways more vulnerable to hackers because more of it can be controlled by computers. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, what I hear is that it, it might be harder to take down the American grid. It might be easier to keep it down, in part because we're not as good at responding to blackouts as Ukraine, who has a much less reliable, older grid that goes down all the time. So they're used to kind of sending out trucks to just manually flip the power back on. We don't have as much practice with that. And so, you know, a longer term blackout is possible. So low, lower probability event, right. but if it happens, possibly longer lasting damage. And our response is, is unknown. I mean, we, we've never considered a cyber attack so far an act of war of any, of any kind. That's right. And if you look at, uh, I hate to bring this up, but the, the U.S. presidential election hacking, which we might all be tired of talking about at this point, but we have had no coherent response to that. We had sanctions that the, the White House has now tried to roll back, talked about trying to undo. It doesn't seem like we have a, any kind of unified diplomatic response, not just you know, um, between the U.S. and Ukraine, but even across American party lines. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.